Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and today I want to talk about microtransactions in $60 video games. It seems that more and more recently, developers are starting to adopt this business model. You have games like Halo 5, it's rumored to be in Rainbow Six Siege, Grand Theft Auto, and for a lot of gamers, it's upsetting. It feels like you already put down the $60 for the base game, and then they're trying to nickel and dime you along the way just to get as much money as they possibly can out of you. And so what I wanted to do today was talk about how microtransactions are changing these large AAA games for $60, usually for the worse, but also in very select situations, how they can honestly be a good thing. And so the first excuse that I hear from some developers is that they're putting in these microtransactions for the benefit of the player. Their argument is that, hey, some people can't spend hundreds of hours every single week playing our video game. We understand that. They have a life outside of our game, and so if they want to progress a little bit faster, they don't want to go through the grind of unlocking certain attachments or unlocking uh, side upgrades. We'll give them an XP bonus if they put down two, three, five dollars to do so. And while at first glance this might look benign, it's like, oh, hey, yeah, okay, if someone doesn't have a lot of time to play the game, giving them an outlet to maybe progress faster, that seems at least decent, as long as it's not buying power, but then when you realize that they're not doing this for selfless reasons, you realize that this is actually affecting the way that you progress through these games. A developer and a publisher wants you to buy these microtransactions. They're not doing it for your benefit. And so what they're going to do is that they're going to make the grind to get these unlocks take a lot longer than they normally would. Uh, a good example of this was with Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. I distinctly remember that when that game released, it took a significant amount of time to unlock some of the side upgrades. If you wanted to play as a certain character with a certain loadout, it was going to take you a long time to do so. And while normally I don't have a problem with this in multiplayer games, it gives you something to strive after, it gives you a sense of accomplishment when you finally achieve that unlock, but then a little bit after the game release, that's when they announced their microtransaction. Oh, so that's why it took so long to grind out these new characters. You had every intention of adding in microtransaction to quote unquote help people out to allow them to unlock things a little bit faster. You're doing this out of the goodness of your heart, but in reality, you probably designed it from the very beginning to take a very long time to achieve these upgrades, realizing that this would incentivize the player to go through the microtransaction route. As soon as we start to transfer this on over into every $60 video game, Game, that's when we start to run into some serious issues. Uh, another form that we're seeing more and more is the addition of paid cosmetic items. For some people, they don't have any issue with this because at its core, it's not going to impact the gameplay. It doesn't give you any upgrades, it's not going to increase your stats, it's not going to make you level up any faster, it's just there to give you more customization options if you want to spend more money on that game. You do need to realize, though, that it does impact the game itself. Sure, you're not upgrading your character, but if you're someone who loves to achieve something, let's say you play Call of Duty all all the time and you love to go for the golden gun, well now let's say they no longer gave you the golden gun through in-game progression, you now had to spend maybe five dollars on that weapon to get that cool customization. This is where things have been slowly starting to progress. Uh, a good example of this is with World of Warcraft. For a long time now, Blizzard has been adding in some fantastic new mounts. They look amazing, new textures, new animations, but the twist on it is that it costs money to unlock them. And while once again it doesn't impact the gameplay itself, it's not going to give you any cool new stats, it absolutely affects the way that they develop the game. They now have a financial motivation to focus on just creating new and cool and amazing cosmetic items that they can sell through these microtransactions. All of the other normal cosmetic items that would have been in the game, screw it, we're not going to spend as much time on it because we don't have that extra cash flow. And so for gamers that like to get these cool new cosmetic items through in-game progression, uh, they're going to be out of luck when this type of business model starts to creep into these video games. And it kind of sucks when you really think about it. And so with all this being said, I would say that microtransactions just do not have any place in a $60 video game. If I'm putting down that amount of money, it is unacceptable that I'm not getting the full product. The fact that you are trying to nickel and dime me along the way is just inexcusable. The one exception that I have to this though, and it's the only situation where I think it's okay, is when paid cosmetic items and only cosmetic items start to fund free DLC. We're starting to see this with some games like Halo and with Rainbow Six Siege. Both of them have announced that all future DLC or all map packs 
are going to be free. And the way that they're going to be funding it, or at least with Halo, is through these microtransactions. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege is still up in the air. They haven't announced their, their microtransaction model just yet, but I'm assuming it's just around the corner. Uh, there was a little bit of a leak with Angry Joe's interview. They announced Rainbow Credits, which was different from the normal renown progression that they had in the game. And so a lot of people are speculating that, yeah, there's going to be microtransactions, and that's going to fund uh, all the map packs that they have announced will be free. And so the reason why I think this is a good thing really just comes down to the fact that multiplayer games thrive on the consistency and the stability of their player base. If you know that every couple of months there's going to be more content for Halo 5, you're more likely to continue to play the game, which keeps people together and is just better for the community overall. And so the reason why I think it's acceptable to have at least paid cosmetic items is for that benefit. But that's the only way that I think it's acceptable. As soon as you start to add in uh, items that give you power, which is a little bit iffy in Halo 5, but only in one game mode, that's where we do start to run into some problems. Uh, but overall, I feel like this is the only circumstance, the only situation where microtransactions are acceptable in a $60 video game. As long as it's going to the funding of DLC and we know for an absolute fact that we are going to be getting it for free, then this seems like a reasonable substitute. I already know a lot of people are getting tired of the $50 season pass that we've been getting recently with like Battlefield Call of Duty and now Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, it caused a lot of ruckus when they announced it for Star Wars Battlefront and if there was a way where we could maybe have it for free, but they, they could fund it, because let's be honest, they are a business at the end of the day, they have to earn money. If they're able to do it with just cosmetic items, uh, that could actually be a step in the right direction. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's video. I've been wanting to make this for a while because it seems like this is a growing trend in the industry and I thought that it would just be fun to talk about, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this topic. Do you think that microtransactions should never be in a $60 video game, even if it is going to fund DLC? or do you think that it doesn't matter at all and you really don't care whatsoever? Let me know down below. Uh, but yep, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.